Consider your last-minute meetings, get-togethers, or celebrations handled because McAllister's Deli in Carbondale brings their best to every event. From delivery and setup to big appetites and the smallest details, McAllister's Deli has you covered. Go to McAllister'sDeli.com backslash catering and let's stay connected. That's McAllister's Deli in Carbondale, the official healthy choice option of Saluki Athletics. Welcome to another Saluki Standards podcast. I'm your host, Connor Runyon. This week's guest is Saluki football alum, Tommy Kutsos. He uh, endearingly was known by Saluki fans as Touchdown Tommy during his time as a Saluki running back. His final season in the Maroon for SIU was 2003. Then he went into the Hall of Fame class of 2010. Uh, it, an endless impact on the record book for Tommy. Uh, But the two big ones, he broke the school and the conference rushing record during his time playing for the Salukis. Let's get into it. Here's Tommy Kutsos on the Saluki Standards Podcast. Good to talk to you. How you been? Good, good. Thanks for uh, having me on. It's always great to to speak with someone uh, from, from, from SIU and always tracking SIU. So thanks again for having me on. You gave me a little update on on what you're up to now, but uh, give give listeners an update on where you're at, what you're doing work wise and family wise. Yeah, absolutely. Well, number one, I'm still a, a huge uh, Saluki fan. I obviously I'm 40 now, but still track all of SIU football, basketball, and all athletics. I currently live in the Chicagoland area, um, in a town called Naperville. I lived downtown for about 10 years, and I moved out. I have a four year old and a three year old, and uh, Soon, uh, hopefully, he'll, Yanni, which is my youngest boy, will get his first scholarship offer from Coach Hill, and he can sign early, and we can get him into uh, SIU uniform quicker than uh, than most kids. So, <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you got him carrying the ball already? I got him carrying the ball. I got him with the SIU jersey. I uh, got a couple stand up dummies in the living room, so we're we're starting him off slow with some calisthenics and some footwork. And uh, he's only three, but I think by the time he's five, we'll be ready to pop on that chin strap and then get some contact drills going as well. Do the uh, you, you got two, so you could you could run full Oklahoma drill in your house. Well, we can we can we can run the Oklahoma drill. I don't know if that's legal anymore in terms of concussion protocol, but my my four year old daughter is sort of more built like me, and my youngest son is sort of built like my wife. So got the physiques down uh, opposite, but we'll see what happens. At this point, she's just a cheerleader in the uh, in the living room for. So. <laughs> That's, that's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, uh, wanted to, you know, wanted to start kind of going through the arc of your, your SIU career, um, you know, being up there near Chicago and coming down to Carbondale. What's, uh, what initially lured you to, to come down and be a Saluki? Well, it's crazy. I actually went to an all boys military Academy up here and, um, back then the NCAA didn't count shooting guns, military recon, and some other of the core classes, uh, uh, for, for, uh, uh, admission. So it was a little late and delinquent on, on getting accepted. So SIU had coach Liggins at the time. He really stayed on me. It was really one of the only schools that stayed on me with some of my academic uh, hurdles. I had finally gotten through those hurdles late in the signing period and gotten some interest from other D ones, but was really loyal to coach Liggins and the whole SIU staff. And I, I really fell in love with the campus didn't want to go anywhere close like Illinois state or Northern. It was, you know, sort of my mom and dad could jump in the car and sort of visit me at any time and didn't want that. So SIU provided an awesome, awesome landscape. The weather was beautiful. The people were great. Uh, I just really fell in love with the campus. I, that's how I landed at SIU. And, uh, and it was one of the greatest decisions of my life. Built an enormous amount of friends there. Uh, still have them to this day. And uh, yeah, I, I just loved going to Carbondale. Yeah. 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 The the state of the football program obviously built into a bit of a powerhouse, mm-hmm. you know, toward toward the back end of your career. But sure. you know, f- football wasn't exactly on a high when when you committed. So, uh, you know, what what did you see as far as the vision for how you could maybe change some things and and build the program up when you committed? Yeah, it was uh, when I got there as an 18 year old and, and we had limited amount of scholarships. I don't know if a lot of viewers knew we, we didn't have the full allotment of scholarships. So we were sort of working with a half of a deck. Um, but bottom line is I love football. I, I didn't care if I went to a team that was 10 and one or one and 10. I love being out there. A lot of, a lot of guys don't like practicing football. I love practicing. I love being there. 
I never thought that it was going to change that rapidly. And, and there was a lot of doubt when Jerry Kill came on board. But, I mean, he's, he's a Hall of Famer. He's turned, down, turned around so many programs. Our first year was really difficult. I think we were 1-10. Uh, and then a lot of people didn't think we were going to get the 10 and one the next year. So it was, a, it was a huge turnaround. I was really fortunate and blessed to be a part of it and to get a ring before I left. Um, but, you know, I, I still cherish those first two years where we were four and eight or three and nine. I don't even remember what we were. We didn't win a lot of games, but uh, it was still great going to McAndrew on a Saturday morning. I still think of it to this day and, uh, and, and playing in that smoke smokestack and on that, that beautiful, uh, beach turf that we had it was state of the art that's a joke <laughs> but uh, it was it was great just being out there and I just uh, you know I, I love to see where the program is today and I'm really hopeful that that coach uh, Hill will, will turn it around and get to where it was when Kill was there you still have rug burns from that beach I turf have so, I have so many rug burns from that beach turf that uh, it just it just it's unbelievable and all the SIU guys that I, that I run into we always just it's almost like a rite of passage like hey let me see where your, your McAndrew tattoo is. And we all just sort of pull up our sleeves or pull up our pants on our knees and everyone shows uh, everyone where those rug burns are. So <laughs> the McAndrew branding. That's funny. Yeah. I used to call it beach turf. So, I mean, it was a, it was a tough time to do a jump cut. You'd slide a little bit and then you'd have to put that foot into the ground. But uh, we turned it around and got to see some artificial turf and in a stadium that they have now a state of the art been there a bunch of times. And never would have thought we'd be we'd have that down the road when we were at McAndrew. So yeah, you mentioned Coach Kill coming in. Uh, you know what was? Uh, yeah, I feel like everybody has you know five, six, seven, a hundred Coach Kill stories. But what was your first impression when you know Coach Kill is getting in there and, and trying to turn things around? Yeah, he. Uh, it's funny, you know, he, he got in there. This guy from Kansas, this short guy from Kansas, with sort of a you know a southern. I wouldn't say a southern draw, Kansas accent and. You know, it was totally night and day from Co Coach Corliss, and he had a tough task of uh, turning the program around, you know, getting new guys in, getting some old guys out. Uh, and I think our first spring practice, I got into a fight with uh, a linebacker by the name of Ronnie Doyle, and he tried to break it up. And I think he caught he caught a he caught a, a fist, and I just said, "Man, this this guy's tough. I mean, he, he's willing to get in here and break up this fight, and he, his glasses are all screwed up." And I said, "This guy's for real." So. For me, that was one of the big turning points of just starting to learn him and the coaching staff, and and, uh, and he did a fantastic job. And I think at the time, and, and since he left, I think he had the longest running tenured coaching staff uh, with Clay's and Savell and, and and Coach Reeves and, and Matukowicz, and all those guys stayed together, and that's why they had success was the longevity and, uh, and working together collectively for so many years. He must and have been okay with you getting in the fight because it didn't impact your playing time at all. No, not that. I don't think, I don't think he was too mad at me, but uh, he set the tone. You know, we weren't going to have any fights any, anymore, and uh, and guys fell in line after that. And it was it was really really good to see uh, that turnaround and change in mentality and that winning mentality that we had uh, with Jerry Kill. Were you surprised you had the impact that you did right away? You know, getting in there and carrying the load a lot immediately. Yeah, no, I mean, I had I was pretty used to it my first two years starting as a true freshman. I was used to it, and then I, it was, you know, it was, it was a change when he, they implemented sort of the shotgun offense. That was a change, but uh, it was a lot of hard times. It was all worth it at the start of, um, you know, going four and eight, I think, and then having a couple down years, then going one and ten, and then finally you know, walking across the stage, graduating from SIU with the championship ring. I mean, that it, it really was a, a bow on it. It was a bow on it, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was the the toughest part for you building uh, when when it wasn't uh, you know the the glamour of going to the playoffs and getting that ring? Yeah, you know you build so many, you facilitate so many long lasting relationships with guys off the field, and, and then you start to see and align that maybe their off the field actions aren't aligning with, with the new coaching staff. So some of your friends unfortunately have to go, uh, and I think Jerry's uh, Jerry's motto was apple in a roadmap, and I think a lot of people know that. So you see some of your friends off the field start not to really align with winning. Uh, and it all comes down to winning. You know, you have to make sacrifices to win and you, you have to align yourself completely from top to the bottom. So that was a hard time. It was a hard part of change to see so many guys you come in with not really finish and see those guys at the end, but it was all worth it because if you really love football and you really want to win, you'll make that sacrifice to do what you have to do. Bud Light has created a seltzer so satisfying it will have your taste buds going wild. Bud Light Seltzer is the official seltzer of Saluki Athletics. 
you know, you were, you were on your way, you know, your junior year, you had, you had already had a couple of good seasons behind you as a Saluki. Yeah. And then I, I think about, you know, when you get injured. Yeah. Yeah. That was crazy. I mean, take, take me back to that. And just the, uh, you know, yeah, I, we were playing, we were playing at Murray state and uh, it was a, actually a funny story here. So we're playing at Murray state's my first carry. I get the ball and I, I run for like a, 10 yards or somewhere around the first down. I'm really excited. And I try to get up and intentionally or unintentionally, this big uh, lineman from Murray state lands on my arm as I'm trying to get up, snaps my radius in half. And I knew something was wrong. Cause my arm looked like it was, you know, sort of bent out of uh, out of a horror movie. And uh, I remember the, the trainers Ed coming over and looking at it, they wrapped the towel on it. And I walked back to the sidelines and Jerry Till asked me if I was going to be all right. And I looked at him and I said, yeah, coach, I'll be in on the next series, which if viewers don't know, it means the next time the offense gets the ball. Uh, then I went to the sidelines. And as soon as I got on the bench and sat down, I passed out. And then I didn't remember getting up until I was in the ambulance. So, so uh, it, it was, a, it was a hard time. You know, uh, I think we had a lot of potential for that year. I was really sad, but then we had a backup with Mohammed Abdul Kabir step up and, and he, and really he took off flying and sort of set the stage for the following year for both of us to be in the backfield. How hard was it to watch? It was really hard to watch. I was happy though. Like the Western Illinois game where they had, we had won uh, at the last play of the game. And that was phenomenal. It was just sad not to be a part of it, but I knew great things were in the works. I knew we could, a lot of guys were coming back and all those players like Sam Bursky were just going to be a year older uh, and a year better. Mm-hmm. You, you mentioned uh, Muhammad coming in there, you yep. know, you, you go from you're, you're the guy to all of a sudden you guys have two stars. What was the dynamic in, in your guys' relationship? I think it was pretty good. I mean, I was, we, we shared uh, series, we shared snaps. I think it was two different running styles. So it was, it was really, really hard for defenses to scheme for us. Uh, and I think in the beginning there was never any animosity, but just more of a competitive nature for guys that want to win. And then it, I think that transcended into a great friendship. Uh, and a great partnership because we knew we could take this team to a whole other level. Mm-hmm. What uh, you know? What what about those those offensive linemen? What stood out to you about the, about the offensive line that uh, you guys are running behind? Because obviously they they cleared the uh, cleared the way for both. Yeah, of you well, in the, the first couple of years I played, uh, the offensive lines were great too, and then we sort of had a lag, at, uh, which is some transition. And then Gary really recruited great guys up front that could really clear the way. So it was it was really night and day uh, from his first year to his third year or his second year with the guys that we had brought in. Uh, and then obviously with our strength and conditioning coach, coach Klein was a whole different format. So you saw a bunch of guys on the line, both sides of the line getting bigger, faster and stronger. And that really transcended the results on the field. Yeah, sure. sure. 2003. I mean, that's, you, you know, you come back, you, you guys break a 20 year playoff drought. Um, I mean, how rewarding after all the stuff we were just talking about building the thing up, how rewarding was that season for you? Oh, it was phenomenal. It was great. I, I never thought we were going to get there. Uh, I never even thought we would smell the playoffs. So then just to get that, uh, just to get that championship and to get an opportunity to fly to Delaware, still salty that we had to fly somewhere. I still think a lot of the guys think we should have been in Carbondale. We might've had one, a couple other games, but uh, you know, have an opportunity to get on a plane and go to, and go to uh, division one, double a playoffs format. We never, I never thought that was ever going to happen at SIU and to finally make it happen. It was just, like I said, it was just icing on the cake at that point. Did you guys realize what you were doing at the time? The the history you know I, that you're making? I think I think for me, I realized it later when you, you had succession of Parky Whitlock and the Brandon Jacobs that were coming in. And then the following year, you know, they go up to Northern and they're beating Division One A teams or beating Indiana's. And you're saying, wow, I was part of a, a foundation, sort of a stepping stone to get these guys to where it was. I think that's where it all started for Jerry. Uh, so it was really, really rewarding to see that in the years to come after I left. So was it just business as usual then when, when you were going through it? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, it was just, you know, keep your head down. And, and Jerry's motto was, you know, hard hat, lunch pail type of, you know, get up and, and go to work. And the cool thing about uh, what really helped me with, with sports was uh, it was an avenue to just not think about your personal life, but think about maybe things that were happening in school during the time, just, just walk between those lines, enjoy yourself, play ball and worry about everything later. And I think if you could take that approach and compartmentalize that, and players to this day, I think these successful ones do that. They block everything out. 
for that two and a half or three hours or whatever it is, focus on your craft, focus on what you love, because at the end of the day, it doesn't last forever. And you know, it's at some point it's going to, it's going to end and the music stops. So I think that's what made it successful too that year. Mm-hmm. How do you think the community embraced that 2003 team? Oh, they loved it. I think it was awesome. We had lights for the first time. I mean, it was just fantastic. I mean, again, we were just at the ground level of what was happening. Um, so everyone that sort of sees that new stadium now and sees everything from under our sponsorships, you know, we never had any of that stuff. We were sharing, you know, gray shimmels. We were sharing socks. We had holes in this old shoes. So, uh, you know, we didn't get to really reap the rewards of it playing wise, but from a viewership. Yeah. It's, it's phenomenal. When you would walk around campus would people recognize you. Oh yeah. All the time. And we, I mean, at the time we had, 25,000 plus the, plus the, uh, law school. I think we almost had 30,000 students on campus. So it was, it was a great, great time. And uh, you know, our basketball team was, was just on the cusp with Bruce Weber, uh, our next door neighbor. One of my neighbors was Jermaine Deerman and had great park uh, friendships with Kent Williams. So you know, we were sort of getting going, but the basketball team was off and running and they were starting their sweet 16 runs. So it was just a great time to be alive in Carbondale, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I mean, this, this question gets asked to, uh, you know, athletes and coaches in your era a lot, I think, but, but how much synergy did you feel like there was between basketball and your success? Softball was winning, you know, you, you had a lot of things working at the same time at SIU at that point. Yeah. I think it was just a great culmination of just positive energy and competitive nature, con- continuous competitive nature of a basketball teams, you know, really doing well, football t- teams got to do well. Hey, the, the girls' softball team was was killing it with Carrie Blaylock, Blaylock, and everyone else was just sort of feeding off each other. So, um, I think it was just really, really good for all the teams to start to turn around, and uh, it, it, we we fed off that. You know, it was it was competitive nature. No one wanted to lose. Yeah, yeah. some some pros obviously in that era too, and uh, it it sounded like there was a decision for you to maybe make after your junior year uh, on you know whether you make that leap or not. Eventually, yeah. you don't. Yeah. Why, why didn't you? I get side. Well, I get sidelined. I didn't because I, I think we knew we had a lot going back I, and really going into my senior year of the year that I got, uh, that I broke my radius. That, that year was really the, probably the, my peak performance and physical nature that I ever had. So I thought it was, I was really going to capitalize on a great year. Um, and that's the reason why I came back. Um, and I didn't no, uh, no reservations about it. I mean, it was the right decision. Football is a contact sport. If you play long enough, you will get injured. And if you play my position long enough uh, and start four years in Division One school playing running back, you're going to get some bumps and bruises. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, how did your draft stock change by by coming back? Uh, I, I think you know the, Jerry and the rest of the uh, guys in our office put out a um, sort of a, a, a this exploratory uh, NFL draft, and I think they came back to be a, a really late round or a high priority draft pick. So. Uh, you know, I knew at the point I was sort of taking a risk, and I thought if I had come back and had a phenomenal year, uh, my senior year, I would just improve that. Um, so that's that's really sort of the aspect that we went with, and uh, and it worked out. Yeah, minus breaking my arm. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. I mean, it, does that factor into to your thinking? With you know, with the broken arm, like you know, yeah, maybe. there's no way I could have came. I could have left at that point. I was in my my arm was in a cast for almost three and a half months, and I really didn't have a lot of ability to run. Uh, it's tough to run when your arm's in a sling for three months. So I needed to come back. I needed to rehab. I needed to get my body in check, and I did that. Uh, and then I had an opportunity. Uh, when I got done playing and I was selected in the blue gray all-star game, which at the time was an elite all-star game for college seniors. Uh, and I was also on the uh, waiting list to go to the, another uh, bowl. But unfortunately during that all-star game, I was like two days before the practice. It was in mobile, Alabama. And that game used to be on, on uh, national TV on Christmas day. I put my foot in the ground after I caught a ball and twisted my knee in a really weird fashion. And then in a, uh, tearing my MCL, PCL, and partial ACL tour, uh, tear, which really, really sidelined me after that. So, yeah. yeah. So, unfortunately, two really big injuries back to back years. And um, it was tough. It was very difficult to come back with. Uh, coming from SIU, small window really of opportunity from a smaller Division One school. So, you really got to get in that window when you're hot. Uh, and it was just difficult for me to get back. Uh, that window when I got injured two years in a row. Mm-hmm. 
I'll tell you, uh, when, when you were right, I mean, seeing, seeing the highlights is, is really cool. Uh, thank goodness for, for Mike Reese's video archive. It's, it's fun to look <laughs> back at some of that stuff. Um, yeah. but man, you were, you were hard to tackle. Yeah. Why, why were you so hard to bring down? I don't know. I mean, I sort of had a, a different mix I, at the time at SIU was about between two thirty and two twenty five, but slightly nudged under two, uh, five eleven. So really, really just compact compounded. And, and one thing that I really, uh, stressed was I was, I was at the time, my time at SIU was really one of the strongest guys there from a lower body to upper body. Uh, and that was difficult for defenders to take me down, but really just a, just a will and the want to of not going down. And I, I really love playing football. I love being around it. Uh, and playing running backs hard. I mean, you get the ball and you have 11 guys chasing you at that moment. So, um, playing at SIU in the early days and not having much success and getting hit in the backfield was normal. So for me, you know, when Jerry came, I didn't get hit until, you know, maybe past the line of scrimmage. It was, it was like a kid in a candy store. So uh, really just the mentality of not wanting to go down, loving the game and, and just really sucking up every moment of that time while you had it before it was taken away. Who did you model yourself after at that point? You know, at that point, I, 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 I liked a bunch of different runners. I mean, obviously being from Chicago, you're, you're from Chicago, you know, Walter Payton is beloved here in the city. Um, he was one of my favorites. I got to play against his son in high school um, and uh, really just modeled my, you know, my, my running style after him. And if you watch any of those old ladies bears highlights, I mean, that guy was a load to take down and he never went down on first contact. So I always tell myself, you know, once I got the ball, the yards after contact was going to be there and it was going to take one guy to cut to bring me down. And if you look at highlights, I don't think I got tackled by one guy a lot of times. So I think, but when you were in high school, Walter, Walter probably passed on shortly after that, but he would have still been alive when you played his son, right? He was alive. We actually played Jared in a playoff game in my high school and he was up in the stands and uh, he watched the whole game. And back at the time, he had a radio show in Chicago on 670 with Mike North. And after we beat uh, his son, um, they were razzing him a little bit and said, yeah, Mike, you know, I, I, think, uh, I think I think your son lost to a, to a pretty good football team. And, and he said, yeah, they had a kid that looked like Mike, the Larry Zonka uh, on the team. So I think Walter saw me, saw a young Larry Zonka at the time. So who knows? But I had a chance to meet him, and uh, it was phenomenal. It was a great experience. And uh, yeah, he, he passed shortly after that. So what did uh, he share with you when you got to meet him? Uh, just a great game and good luck. And uh, it was just bittersweet uh, beating Jared and Jared had a phenomenal career. You know, went to Miami and he played in the NFL for a little bit. And, uh, and now he's a sports analyst on, on uh, in the Chicago area as well. So cool synergies. Um, uh, still a Bears fan, uh, but maybe I should have been a Packers fan after all these years. So, <laughs> <laughs> were you starstruck at all when you met Sweetness? No, no, I mean he was. Uh, you know, I watched so much time, and we had known we were playing for a while. We I, we had a good uh, realization he was going to be at the game, so I was just happy we won. Happy to, to meet him and uh, and move on. Were you a guy that would do the the hill workouts? Yeah, absolutely. Hill workouts, every workout. Um, I mean, it, it was, it was full go at SIU it was full go pre SIU. And I live my life to this day, like it's fourth and goal. So the mindset has never really changed. Uh, everything's going to go hard. Uh, it would teach my kids the same work ethic that was instilled in me. And if they're going to play sports, they're going to play it at the highest level with a never give up attitude. And, and that's the way, that's how you got to do it. That's, that's what makes people successful is not giving up because everyone gets hit. Everyone gets knocked down. Everyone's going to get dropped for a loss when they get the ball. It's really how you respond, how you get up, and how you attack the next play. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned it there a little bit with your kids, but with, with what you're doing now, obviously being a parent is part of it, but also with your work, how do you think you've, you've applied the mentality that you ran the football with to, uh, to life? Yeah. Life you know, I, I, before I got into this, I actually was a college football coach for a while. I gave my stab at it. And then when the, uh, when the recession hit in 2008, it knocked me back a little bit at the time. I had spent one year as a running back coach at Nickel State, which was in the Southland, and I was an offensive running back coach at a uh, community college in Scottsdale. So I, I, I had tried before or a post-football career to, to coach, uh, and it was very difficult. But um, I think the biggest takeaway now is, with my current job, is just to instill the same dedication and work ethic and 
And I always reference my football days. You know, the, the cool thing about people that have faced adversity, whether it's sports, illness, anything else, like, is you have a baseline, you have a frame of reference. And I look back in a lot of those days at SIU, those days where we used to get the butt kicked out of us, days where I was rehabbing at 5.30 in the morning. Um, and I look back on those days of adversity and it helps me and applies that to my day-to-day -day life now. So that's what I'm thankful for at SIU. And I, I think that's what makes me successful father, successful husband, and it's successful at my job is, is doing that every day now. And, you know, when, when you're a year or a couple of years removed from playing or in your coach, in your case, uh, coaching a little bit after you're done playing it, as time goes on, d does that mentality wear off at all? Like, do you feel far removed from it or, or does it still seem close? Uh, I guess the more white hairs I get on my head, uh, the farther I feel away from it, but it never goes away. You know, uh, it never, it'll never leave you. And I think I'm looking for that next level of being able to coach my son or being able to be out there at some point. Uh, I think my coaching days are not going to be over with in terms of at some point, I think I'll be an assistant coach somewhere, uh, uh later on helping my son. So it, it, it leaves you, but there's always a memory book. It's guys like you that call to bring me back. These are fantastic calls and it really puts you in a great for, uh, state of mind after you do these calls. Cause you look back on those days and people still want to hear from you. You still cherish, you're still valued uh, and you're still a part of the SIU family. And that's something that's never going to go away from you. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, you think you, you're going to be maybe a, a middle school or high school coach as your, yeah, as your son starts son, if, Yeah. Maybe if my son gets to playing football, I can coach his high school. That's, that's the, uh, that's the goal. You know what I mean? Uh, I got plenty of uh, speed ladders. I got tons of stuff in the basement. So uh, I still work out to this day, obviously not you know, four hours a day, like I did at SIU, but still try to get some athletic training in, try to stay young. And I'm really looking forward to applying it to my son or my daughter's athletic career. Uh, and again, you know, whenever coach Hill wants to put out a, 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 a informal uh, scholarship offer, I think my son will accept on my behalf. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go. You heard it coach Hill. Yeah, let's get going. Maybe next, next year's signing season, we can, we can ink him. So yeah. You've been around a, a lot of great players, a lot of great coaches. Who's the best leader you've been around in your life? Uh, best leader. I would say Jerry Kill was one of the best football leaders I've been around, hands down. Um, you know, we, I played with some great guys. Bart Scott, you know, he was a fantastic player, and he was a great leader on the defense as well. Uh, but in terms of leadership, for me, you know, I, I always go back to my dad. Uh, he's probably the greatest leader in my life in terms of instilling a work ethic and a drive uh, to never give up. So, Personally, you know, my dad, athletically, I would say Jerry Kill. Uh, and, and those are two great guys to reference. I'm, I'm, and very lucky and blessed to have those people in my life. You, you mentioned Bart Scott. Um, what's, what's an example of uh, his, his leadership that you he's saw? Big time. He's big time now. I mean, good luck trying to get him. Now he's on ESPN all the time. So I don't really get to talk to him. I've texted him every now and then. But he's, 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 he's pretty big time. You know, he was just a great leader. He, he was the type of guy that really showed by example, you know, and, and you could put him anywhere on the field and he'd be successful. I mean, he'd lined up from safety to DN, the linebacker. I think the only position he didn't play was cornerback, but I'm sure he would have been successful there. So there's people that are vocal uh, that, that, that lead with, you know, by example. And, and I think Bart Scott was one of those guys that really led by example. He, uh, he kind of went viral even a little bit before going viral was a thing when he had the, can't the, wait. The, can't, the can't wait interview. What, what do you, what do you think of when you're watching TV, seeing that? I'm, I'm just thinking I used to beat him up in practice, you know, nobody even knows about it. No, I'm joking. He, we had some great battles. I mean, Bart Scott was phenomenal. And uh, that was my biggest uh, nemesis on defense. My first two years there, first three years there. And it was just a battle back and forth. And, and I knew that, uh, you know, once he met me in the hole, you, you better bring your A game because it was, uh, it was going to be fun at, after that. So. Who, who usually won those battles? I mean, honest with you, I mean, it was 50-50, Bart. Uh, Bart was phenomenal, and, and uh, I think uh, it was a 50-50. I'm not going to say I won them all, but I don't think he's going to say he won them all either. So, uh, But, again, I mean, he did play uh, – I think he made all – he did make an all-pro team uh, for the NFL. So, uh, I think I'm going to give my hats off to Bart in the post-playing uh, career. So. <laughs> There you go. There you go. Yeah. He's phenomenal. He's a great guy. I, I wish nothing but the best. And he's been, he's been just as awesome off the field that he was on the field. 
So, yeah. How many people still call you touchdown Tommy to your face? Everybody that uh, ever meets me that, that was from SIU really refers to me as that. And my wife will say, who the heck is touchdown Tommy? Cause she didn't, obviously she didn't go. I met her in the city and, and uh, she'll, we get a quick laugh out of it, but just people from Carbondale sort of call me that uh, still. And uh, it's a cool name. And uh, I love going back and seeing, uh, you know, the pictures in the uh, hall of fame and then the pictures outside of the stadium. And hopefully uh, my son can hear that one time. And he'll know all the stories were actually true. And all the stories I tell them are just uh, fairy tales. So, when do you remember hearing that for the first time? Uh, I think Coach Reese started calling me that on the radio when I was there my freshman year because I, I scored three touchdowns my first game. And I think I was in the long after that. So I said, I'll take it. I'll take it and go with it. So it was an awesome name that, that Reese put on the radio. And uh, and uh, and Reese was, uh, Reese was spot on. So Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, Final one for you, uh, advice that you'd give to current SIU players. What would you tell them? Uh, my advice to current SIU players would be just to enjoy the ride, enjoy the experience, never take it for granted. Obviously football is a contact sport. It only takes one play and you're out for a month, a year or forever. So really just cherish the time at SIU, cherish the relationships, cherish those times outside the games, in the locker room, on the practice field, in transit, because it really is one of the greatest times of your life. And you do have the rest of your life to work uh, and you're going to use this as a frame of reference to be successful. Uh, but just cherish everything you have it because it really is a blessed experience. And I'm happy and blessed to be there when I was there. Yeah. Can't wait to have you back down. I'll be there soon. As soon as this, uh, as soon as we get into this post pandemic mode and we're not, not all wearing masks, I will be down there. Uh, either going and I have Mary Lou's to go to, obviously I want to go to giant city lodge and a couple other places and I see a bunch of great friends and a g- bunch of great people. And, Cause I know they're all still down there. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, we'll, we'll look forward to that scholarship offer for your son too. Yeah, please do. We won't, uh, we won't hesitate. I'll just make sure he signs it now and, uh, and we'll have his, uh, we'll get his helmet fitted and he'll be ready to go here in uh, the next 15 years. So. All right. Well, uh, Tom, thank you so much. Appreciate your yeah. time. Thank you for having me. Thanks for reaching out. I really appreciate it. And if anything I can do for you, let me know. Will do. That's uh, that's touchdown Tommy, Tommy Kutsos, Hall of Fame class of 2010, the former Saluki running back here on the Saluki Standards Podcast.